A theology of music as it relates to the prophetic unction uh, that comes over uh, the musician. And what we are looking at is that David in Chronicles actually um, institutes a group uh, of the Levitical priesthood, the sons of Asaph, to be uh, prophetic singers right. and to interpret the prophecies of the king. Huh. So David instituted them not just to make up their own prophecies, which they did not, not make up, but they received prophetic uh unction from God to produce psalms, but they were also called to interpret his psalms wow. that he would write out in a messianic form wow. uh, with the messian this messianic prophecy, which in that time, I don't know how aware he was that it was messianic, but he certainly knew and was aware that there was prophetic unction over what he was expressing. And one thing that uh, we're, we were looking at is how in some of these psalms, it seems like David begins speaking about himself. Right. And somewhere in the midst of this psalm, a shift occurs yeah, to be, in his expression. Yeah, messianic. Where the Spirit of God comes on him and moves. It right. changes things. Right. And he begins to speak of things that are impossible for him to achieve. They're impossible and... Uh, promises that were never given to him by God. Yeah, uh, he speaks of promises that are almost seem exaggerations, like that God would increase His kingdom to the uttermost parts of the earth, mm. which is language that is not used by God to describe David's, David's kingdom, kingdom. Right, but it, it is invoked by Jesus Christ when yeah. He says that. If, when they go to Jerusalem, uh, they will receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon them to be witnesses uh, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Right. It's actually Jesus Christ who is using this language that originally was part of a prophetic utterance in Psalm 2. And so what I, what I talk about is wow. how... In a Pentecostal service, when we're singing to God, we oftentimes feel or participate in these in similar prophetic experiences. Uh, not in that we start giving new prophecies, the prophecies of Christ, but in that there comes a point in time in our singing where it is more than just us singing. Right. That God has wow. come in. That's what we call wow. a shift in the yeah. spirit, right? Spiritual songs. Yes. The unction comes in and it changes things. And I think this is what Paul was talking about in Ephesians when he says that we should sing in psalms, in hymns, and in spiritual psalms, which is pneumatica. It's these songs that are a result of spiritual inspiration. Right. Almost at the same, in the same place uh, of... Uh, speaking in tongues as the spirit spirit gives you utterance. Wow, wow, wow. And wow. Romans 8, where it says that uh, we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the spirit prays through us. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, with groanings that cannot be The spirit be sings uttered. through us. Yeah, the spirit sings through well, us. Well, Paul says that in, in Corinthians chapter 14. He right. says, uh, I will speak in the understanding, but I will speak, I will pray in the understanding, I will pray in the spirit, I will sing in the understanding yeah and i will sing in the spirit which right. is a very strong passage anytime being referenced to prank in the spirit referring to speaking in other tongues um it's very 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 strong as when um jude says building up your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost i've had right. people ask how do you know that's talking about speaking in other tongues? That's not just talking about spirit-led prayers. Well, mm -hmm. Paul exclusively makes the paradigm of singing and speaking in the under, excuse me, in the understanding, basically in words or phrases that I can comprehend that are fruitful to knowledge. And there's also another form of prayer and singing that is not fruitful to knowledge, but comes from a spiritual exactly. depth, yes. which is he's talking about other tongues, and yeah. so. Um, to sing in the spirit. Um, so singing in spiritual songs, as you reference in Ephesians, um, probably, probably I would say is 
singing in other tongues, songs that are formed in other languages. Yeah. How often have you heard singing in other tongues in a Pentecostal service? Though? Never in a service. I I do it like all the time. Yeah, yeah, like, me too. like every me day. Too. <laughs> but like, yeah, there are times where it'll come over me and yeah. I'll just be talking in tongues and it turns into singing yeah. in tongues. Yeah. And, uh, and it's because scriptures like this have really opened up my heart and my mind. You know, I am convinced that the only reason why we do not see more of this and okay, now uh, uh, another thought came to my mind, but I'll bring it up in a moment. The only reason why we don't see more of this is just because we're not available for it. Right. If there is such things now, listen, if there is such things as tongues and interpretation, mm. is there such things as tongues, songs in tongues that are interpreted cool, that, that be become songs in English or uh, songs in our understanding uh, that we now received in the spirit. Now we can sing them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I believe we are missing a whole opportunity that Paul was speaking about wow. spiritual songs yeah. that can go through the same process, uh, 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 process yeah. in which tongues and interpretation happens, where we speak in tongues and interpretation comes to benefit the people of God. Right. So a spiritual song comes and its interpretation comes. And now we have these spiritual songs that the apostolic movement can sing. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, and I really believe that the only reason why we don't actually experience mm. this often in, in the apostolic church is because we're not available for it. Right. I remember this, this, um, this apostolic hymn. It's in Spanish. Um, it's called Agradecimiento. Mm. Um, and uh, it's a very well-known um, uh, hymn in Spanish. Um, and it goes... Al meditar, Dios mío, en las cosas que me has dado, mi corazón se inflama turbado de emoción. It says, in, in thinking of or in meditating on or contemplating all the things that you have given me, my heart swells turbulent with emotion. So this, this particular hymn uh, um, was given to this man uh, named Efraín Valverde. He was a bishop in the Apostolic Assembly, I believe, during that time. And his wife was sick. Wow. And I believe this is the story, if I'm not mistaken, that his wife was sick. He prayed for her healing. And when she was healed, uh, she went to the piano to play. And he went to the piano to sing. And as she was playing the chords, the Lord was giving him the song. Wow. She was playing in the spirit. Yeah. And he was singing in the spirit wow. and gave him that song agradecimiento yeah. which has impacted the apostolic movement um and uh man i wish we would see more of that yeah absolutely. where god just pours it out and uh i think a lot of people receive this who are actually not within the apostolic movement right not because god favors them uh but because they're simply open to it they're available to it. Wow. Um, and we need wow. to make them more available. Has, has, and this is a, this is a question worth exploring.